So y'all have been requesting a video about tool core in the comment section. So today I'm finally showing you how to do that, how to measure it, how to set it, and how to use it. So I'm gonna start with the right hand 80 degree turn tool because that is the easiest to set and the most versatile. But wait, I hear you saying. I hear you out there in the internet land screaming, wailing, gnashing your teeth. I'm not trying to set a right hand turn tool. I'm trying to set a left hand turn tool. I'm trying to set a neutral turn tool. I'm trying to set a threader. Calm yourself, take a deep breath, unbunch your panties, because I'm gonna show you how to set those two. Move over to the comparator with our right hand turn tool and I'll show you how to measure it because that is the quickest and easiest way to do it. We're here at the comparator. We have our turn tool. We're gonna set it up on the block like so. And we are going to measure from the clamping face, you know, from the back of the tool holder, bottom of the tool holder, whatever, the side opposite the insert that's getting clamped into the gang. And then we're gonna measure from the bottom of the holder to the top edge of the cutting pool. We'll set it up like so. Find the bottom edge of our holder, zero out our readout, and then measure to the top of the cutting edge. This number should be 500 thousandths. We're using half inch shank turn tools. If you're using 5 eighths shank turn tools, you would want to see 625. If you're using 3 quarter shank tools, you would want to see 750. This number should be the nominal shank size of your tool. And that's what core is. It is an adjustment that allows us to compensate for manufacturing tolerances in the tool making process. So since this is not 500, we are going to have to adjust our core. So we have 497 from the bottom of the holder to the top of the cutting edge. I'm just gonna write that right on the shank. 497.3, just so I don't forget. And so this is how you set tools you can't pace off with. I'll show you once we're back at the machine how to set core if you're at some backwater shop that doesn't have a comparator, uh, find a better shop or buy one. If you don't have a comparator, you really can't use these methods to set left hand or neutral tools or threading tools and things like that. So if you do have a comparator, it's the same process. Set it up there, clamping face. We already zeroed out on the last one. I'm not gonna re-zero it. Oh, this one's a little bit taller. This one's 502. But you can see just they're both half inch shank turn tools. One's 497, one's 502. So they're a little bit different in height. Could be different inserts, could be different holder manufacturers. So I'll write this one down too, 502. Same deal with your neutral holders. This one's a little bit shorter. 499.8. This one's, honestly, I would just leave the core value set at zero for this one. And for the most part, you don't have to get into the tents. Three place decimals are plenty good enough for the girls we go out with. So now that we've measured them all up, we'll go back to the bench. I'll show you the math to determine how we actually get the value that we're going to put into the core offset in the machine. We got our tools measured up. So I'm gonna use the finest graphic software known to man to give you a little graphical representation of what we're trying to achieve here. We'll start with a perfect representation of the end of our bar. So we'll say 500. We're all machinists here. Half inch bar. So we have our tool and we want our tool to be perfectly on center, center of the bar. When we face off, we want no tit. We want it to come down perfectly on center. And then when we turn, we want our tool on center or just a, a tiny bit behind center. But for the purposes of this video, we want our tool on center. So as you saw on the comparator, our tool shanks are not perfectly half inch. So the way that these machines are, this, this L20 takes half inch tools. In a perfect world, the clamping face of that gang is minus 500 from that tool's zero setting in your machine coordinate system. 
So if your tool was perfectly half inch and your machine hadn't been crashed or it wasn't worn out and it was still you know, 500 in the machine coordinates, your core value would be zero. You would have zero in your core. Since these are not perfect and neither is our machine, we're gonna have to make a core adjustment. So we'll start with our turn tool, right hand turn tool, 80 degrees. So we have this distance is 497. So this tool is actually, it's not 500. So the cutting edge of this tool is about three thousandths behind center. So when you face off past zero on the end of your part, you're gonna have a little tit because your tool is behind center. So we're going to have to use the formula that I came up with. Wow. To correct that. So the formula is measured minus nominal times negative two minus nominal times negative two equals equals the core value. So we measured 497 minus half inch tools. 500 is our nominal distance. If you were running 5 eighths tools, 625 would be your nominal distance. In this case, 500 times negative two equals 497 minus 500 negative three thou we have three thou behind center times negative two equals positive positive six thousandths because core works like an offset it's functionally offsetting your y-axis so all values are made on the diameter like all your offsets should be so we are three thousandths behind center so we need to make a positive six thousandths offset we have to double it we have to go positive twice the amount we actually want to move so since we're minus three thou times negative two we're going to go positive six thou and this is what your core value should be don't add this to what's already in there set the core value for this tool to this number. We're moving on to our left hand turn tool. This one measured 502. So if we put this in there, all things being equal, it will be two thousandths ahead of center, right? We have measured 502 minus nominal 500 gives you plus two, right? First grade math, hopefully everybody's still with me. Times negative two equals minus four, right? Is that making sense? We're bigger than our nominal value, so our tool will nominally, all things being equal, be a little bit ahead of center, so we have to make a negative core value to move it back to get it on center, right? Is it making sense? Is it tracking? I hope so. If your machine has been crashed, those theoretical values may not be correct anymore. Your gang may be shifted slightly and it hasn't been grid shifted to correct that. So we'll get a good shot of the math. This is what you write down, put in your notes. If you're gonna do this, if you can't remember it, and we'll go to the machine, we'll set some tools in there, and I will show you how to compensate for machines that may have been crashed and just verify these numbers. So let's reset and pick up back in the machine. I put that right hand turn tool in the machine, touched it off, basic you've seen it before. We got videos on it. So now we have to set our core value. If you notice, we got all kinds of numbers in here different tools, different values. So I put it in tool two over here to where it tells you your nominal shank size, what the machine is set up for. So these are all half inch. Tool one is set up for a 5 8 shank. 
So nominally, your tool one, which is usually a cutoff, should be 625, right? 625 from the back to the cutting edge. So if you'll cast your minds back to 30 seconds ago in the video, that tool measured 497. So we ran the math and we have to make this core value plus six thou. We don't add six thou to what's in there. We are making this value positive six thousands for this tool. So, man set. And you can just add and subtract in man set. You don't have to jog it. You can just man set. Uh, 0 0.0185 input. You can just type in numbers and add that to man set. So now we have positive six thousands. And then we can verify this by taking a face cut with tool two. I want to say tool three because usually that's our current tool. Tool two. So we will just call it to oh, position point. We'll jog Z back. I'm gonna stick my big head in here. Just so we get a skim cut prep cut off. And what we, we should not have a tit. What we should not see is a tit. So it's cut off, back to position point, and just get your fingernail in there and just feel the end of the bar. You can use a file or a, a six inch scale. Just use your fingernail if you have any and feel it. And I do not feel a tit. I have a perfectly smooth, flat bar end, which is exactly what we want. So quick and easy, measure it with the comparator, do the math, put that value into that tool's core, and you're pretty close for 95% of what you'll ever need to do. That works with your left hand tools, with your neutral tools, because you can't face off with these to verify, so you just have to hope it's right, and it should be pretty close. So now I'm gonna show you how to set your core if your machine has been crashed or if this doesn't work. If you run the math, cut off and you have a tit, it's not working, you're gonna have to make some adjustments through trial and error. So if this does not work, or you don't have a comparator, if you're in some hellhole shop that can't afford a comparator, we'll throw a random value back in the core. So what you can do is you can just keep facing off, keep moving your core negative until you get a square tit. If you're ahead of center, you'll have kind of a, a pointed volcano shaped tit. If you're behind center, you'll have a nice square tit. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna move core negative until we get a square tit, and then we're gonna bring it back forward a little bit at a time, five thou, 10 thou, two thou, whatever feels right. We're gonna bring it back forward until that tit goes away. And then we'll know through trial and error that we are cutting perfectly on center and we have a flat bar end again. So I just went like minus 15 thousandths in our core. We're gonna cut off again and we should have a tit, a square tit. We should be behind center, we should have a square tit. Dog the bar out, cut it off, cut it off some more. There we go. And it's done. Tool back to position point. We'll go in here. I still don't actually feel a tit. We'll move it back more until we get a tit. So the comparator is nice, but if your machine's not perfect, your core value is gonna be off because it's not what the machine actually is. It's just what it should be. We're just gonna go back to man set, minus 10 thou. Do another cutoff. Position point the tool, go back in there, get all the chips off. Now I can feel a little tit on there. I can feel it, it's catching my fingernail. We're behind center. There's a little bump of material in front of the tool because the tool is, is not facing off perfectly on center. So I can feel a little, a little nub of material on there catching my fingernail. So now we know we're behind center. Back to man set. It doesn't feel very big. I'm gonna go plus fourth out. Plus four, man set. Jog out our material a couple thousandths. 
reposition point for good luck. Cut it off again. And we're just gonna walk this back until we have a smooth flat bar end again, until there's no tit. So it's still there. I can still just, I can, I can just feel it catching. So I'll go and I'll go three thou. I'll go a little bit less. And it's gone. It's, it's, we're back to flat, which, interesting. We ended up pretty much where we started. So whatever tool was in tool two last was also measuring 497. That tool is set. So the comparator is good. It'll get you close. It'll get you making parts. We can do better if you need to. Most stuff, unless you need a, a perfect end on your part, on your face end, do you really need to go through this? Maybe not. Throw it on the comparator. It'll get you close. It'll get you running. You won't be breaking your tools unless you're doing real delicate, small work. But if you need it perfect, this is the way you can do it with trial and error. Move your core back until you get a tit. Move it back forward until it goes away and then you're good to go. So that will help us with our non-right hand tools also because we measured these values on the comparator, same as tool two. Well, what we measured on tool two wasn't what the machine actually needed to get that tool on center. The value we measured was off 18 thousandths. This gang is 18 thousandths too far forward. We have to have a, a move negative to get it cutting on center. So since we cannot face off with these tools, the tools go in, in the machine like so. We can't face off with these, but we can compare what we measured to tool two. So we measured, we measured tool two at 497. We should have had a plus six thou value in our core. It should be plus six in a perfect world. Unfortunately, the world ain't perfect. This left hand turn tool measured 502. So we should have a minus four thou value in our core for whatever tool this is but it looks like our core, our machine is off by about 18 thou from nominal. So we can use that instead of having minus four, we can use the value that we determined in the machine from tool two from facing off. And we can add that to this. So we got minus four, minus 18, right? Should have been plus six. We ended up at minus 12. That's where the machine's facing off to zero with that tool. We measure these tools at the same time, so we should be able to, we'll say we'll put it in tool three. So we'll say this value should be minus four in a perfect world. And then we can go the difference that we were able to verify with our fingernail and apply that to this also. And now we should be perfectly on center. That's gonna be really helpful for things like your threaders especially your small pitch threaders with fine tips and high rates for soft materials. They don't tolerate being ahead of center very well. So you wanna have them dialed in pretty well. We measure one tool that we can face off with, and you can do this with cutoffs and groovers too. As long as you can face off past center with it, you can just face off and adjust your core negative until you get a tip, bring it back. And then you can measure and compare that tool to tools that you cannot face off with and you can just use that difference you can just apply that difference to whatever your measured value is all right that was a lot of numbers and a lot of talking hopefully it was useful hopefully it made sense if it didn't make sense leave a comment and i'll try to clarify better down there but if you like that leave a like share it subscribe and stay tuned for the next one